Good evening, everybody. So today I wanted to talk to you about why the narcissist does downgrade supply or has to or is forced to downgrade supply. Well, we know that you were the primary and if you were the chosen one that woke up with them uh, to narcissism, what narcissism was, you were chosen to break the generational curse, then you're kind of special. They're going to be fixed on you probably for the rest of their life. But they're forced to downgrade supply for many different reasons. One reason is, is because it took a lot of fuel to get you in the spot of the primary supply. And they're usually lazy and they don't have that kind of fuel. So they are actually willing to sacrifice to get a primary supply and work real hard at their lying and manipulating to get a primary source because they're infatuated with you and they know that if they can secure the primary source, they feel like they'll have you for life. And sometimes they do, but there's a certain group of people that do wake up. Those are the ones that are chosen to break the curse and that would probably be you. But we all know that primary supply sources don't come along very often, if at all, for the rest of their life, to, not to the level that you were, if you gave them everything. Now I'm talking everything. Like you almost lost yourself. You almost lost everything you owned. <laughs> but by the grace of God, you didn't. And you're here today. And you're starting to understand this construct. Most of you probably know it already of how they operate, how they act, who they are and how evil they can be. But what it all comes down to is, is they gave up on love. And when you give up on love, you just you just turn evil. I mean, God is known as being love. It's not by coincidence that this individual gave up on love. They cannot feel empathy. And they just happen to be as evil as they are. I mean, they're the epitome of evil. you got to question what's going on. But regardless, my point is they can't do anything good. They don't have any good in them. They don't seem to even want to make a change, and that would be good if they wanted to make a true change, but they don't. Why I'm saying all this is because it puts them on this vibrational level. So they may get some kind of what they, what you, what some people can consider blessings. Maybe they have some sort of charisma. Maybe they have some kind of looks to them. Maybe they have beauty. Maybe they have control and they have a team of people around them. But that's not a blessing. That's the curse in disguise. If not the curse out front, they're never going to be in a relationship that's ever going to be happy. They're never going to be truly happy. They're never going to understand love. And that's what makes them frustrated a lot. What makes them frustrated a lot is that they don't feel the love that we feel. They See, you look at them as having charisma and charm or something like that, but that's just for a takedown. It's all fake. And it's really not even coming from them. It's coming from the construct. It's really the curse on their life. What I'm saying is, is a lot of times they're wearing your fuel too. So you really don't know how good you look. They can only see themselves as far as like how they're doing and what they're doing and if they're doing it well, if they get outside validation through people's reactions and you are able to regulate yourself. See, they have you regulating them and it's not your job to regulate somebody else's emotions, especially when they're evil and manipulative, cheating and lying and stealing and trying to destroy you. But in the very beginning, they do. They, they're infatuated with you. And that's why they want to nail you down. They're very much so into you, but they won't tell you that. And if they do, they may tell you in the very beginning. But a lot of times that's part of the construct. But some of that's true. And they kind of fall for the trap as well when they're getting into love bomb phase with you. They know that they're lying and cheating and stealing to you, but they also enjoy, they enjoy the moment. I'll say that. They enjoy those moments with you to some degree in the very beginning. But very quickly, it turns sour. And they're still manipulating even in the enjoyment that they're having with you because they really truly want to find love. That's really what it is. And they gave it up. And so that's where their curse lies. They gave up on love. And if you can't feel love, you can't, there's no way to God. That's for starters. And so they come to you because you're heavy in love and you're, you are able to emotionally regulate them as shitty as that sounds. You do have the ability to do that for, for a time, but not forever. That's why they run cycles, because nobody can. Because what is inside them and what is in control of them is insatiable. And it's sadistic. And in the very beginning, they know what they're doing, but they do enjoy the moment. The moment with you, because they really want love. But it's still the fantasy, because they know it's fake. And you don't know it's fake yet. But that's why they come to you. They come to you because you're highly emotional in the emotional field. You understand the emotional field very well and you're high in empathy. And that's because you refuse to become a narcissist in a narcissistic type family. And your innate self refused it time after time after time again. And so you become a scapegoat, the one that absorbs all the emotions of everybody else. So when you wake up to narcissism, you're, you have to put that stuff into, under your control better. 
That's why you don't react. You just respond. You gray rock. And when it, outside of the narcissist, you do the same. And you, you stay close to your frame. You keep your fuel right here. And a lot of times, you'll probably want to show your emotions only behind closed doors. <laughs> In a good way. I mean, you're, you're not like the narcissist, so. But people abuse, and what you thought regular life was, it isn't. Apparently, it's not. And to some degree, that's kind of a shame. But we were walking around in our innateness. Yes, we were groomed to act and operate a certain way. And we weren't given much direction, probably as children, because our parents were emotionally checked out. Too concerned with what they're doing, and what deficits they have, and how to fill them, than giving us any kind of validation. But when you wake up to this, it shakes you into a correctness that in the end, you will probably want to find the narcissist and thank them because they woke you up to a huge blessing. And I know you may not think so right now, but being years out from it, I can tell you, and there's others that can tell you that it's true. If you are strong enough to stand up, and if you went through life as long as you have and you haven't wanted to do evil, then you're probably gonna be just fine. You, right now, you, if you're dealing with tough times, then you have to put one foot in front of the other. I've been there. I've been there twice like that. And it sucks but you carry on and you will heal truly and you will start to walk in your blessing because really even though you were a good individual you were misled and people die every day for lack of knowledge and never reach their pinnacle of what god has positioned you to do but that's not you because you're awoke and this was a huge burden upon your life. This was holding you back. But God blesses people for having good hearts and wanting to do right. And that's why he chose you. With the narcissist, I'm saying all this because with the narcissist, they're on this such a low vibration that they can't get the good individuals, not high value targets. And the primary source in their harem is the only one that's a, is a high value target. Generally speaking, they don't get that. What's in their harem garage besides you were the best looking car in their harem garage left. And you got the keys to prove it. What's in their garage is a bunch of cheap, broke down old cars that need their oil changed. They're not smelling too good. The paint jobs like not looking so hot and half of them are rusting out. And that's because they're on the same vibration level as the narcissist. And see, these are things that the narcissist will not tell you. They keep their harem hidden, but at the end of the day, they just need a body. And when they get you, it's because you were probably on a low vibration as well. At that particular time, we all can have dips in life, especially when you're unawoke, because you can have people yanking you around and you're just trying to help. And help sometimes, not always, but sometimes when it's unregulated can get you hurt. And so you got to be vigilant. You can't be simple. You got to be prudent and you don't want to be pompous. I mean, that's just how it is. So that's why you're leveling up. They're on a vibration level right here. Okay. It's like the third dimension right here, but this is probably where you were. I went through a divorce and a death and a couple other things during the time that I met the narcissist. So that stuff's true. I was on a low vibration. I was hurt. But because of all this, it shook me awoke. And now I, you know, you understand where you came from at some point and it helps a lot, but they have to go with a downgrade supply. And that's because that's the level they're on. And that's the level that they get. It's, it may sound odd to you, but the places they're going to frequent are going to be places of low level, low vibrational people that don't have empathy or very low on empathy. They're all thieving, stealing and cheating. Half of them aren't groomed, they ain't smelling right, and they don't care about anybody but themselves, just like the narcissist. Typically, what kind you are is the kind you end up hanging out with. And that's why the narcissist does get excited when they get a high value in path that they can nail down as a primary source supply. Because they will play off of your empathy. They will guilt you or put you in fear, or they will guilt you off your loyalty. Those are the three things that they really work on to devalue or to keep the empath down. 
And once you wake up, you kind of got you got to get back up to your baseline wherever you were before you meet the narcissist, and then elevate higher because now you're on a new level. You know how to emotionally control every situation. You know where you were being manipulated. You're able to go inside and go back to your childhood and to understand where you came from and, and where your wounds were, where you had holes and leak spots in your aura. And if you control your fuel, then you can get that's your energy and your energy is what it takes to go out there and do your daily business and to do extra and to have joy and peace it comes with all of this. It comes with your fuel. And that's why they, that's why it's very valuable. And that's why everybody wants it. Well, you gotta be careful because people steal energy. They steal fuel. But they can't get you like, they can't get somebody like you. That's the point. The point is, is they're hanging out with low level people. And if you're wondering, how can they get so many targets? Well, because they're low level. If you want to go out there and just get a date, you can get a date every night. But they're not going to be high value. That's why when they get you, it matters. You elevate them in every which way. And you're the, you're the only one. They don't have love, right? So they don't have the ability to get to God. They really don't. All they could do is go to the one downstairs and that's what they end up doing because that's all they got. Okay. And they don't like him because nobody likes him, <laughs> but they can't get to God because they, they revoke themselves. They just don't want to change. And when you walk in that kind of folly and you don't want to change, then you're going to become the epitome of evil. And that's what happened. Anyway, they screw everything up anyway. They can't last with anybody anyway. They run in cycles because they destroy. That's all. They take and destroy. You shouldn't miss the narcissist. If you do, you know it's the trauma bond, so you got to be able to work on that. But the downgrade supply is nothing like you, and they will never tell you that because they cannot be vulnerable. That's another thing. If you can't be vulnerable with somebody, how are you going to get a high-value target? Because everything starts in here first with a high-value target. It should. You don't want to have like an, a good-looking outside veneer with nothing inside it. And that's, that's sometimes, a lot of times what you find with the narcissist. They get outside supply and they also make sure this looks good. I mean, there's all kinds of different narcissists, but a lot of them, they may have an, a good looking outside veneer, but there's absolutely nothing in there. Or, or in fact, it's evil. They get joy off of your pain. I mean, who, who, who wants that? I mean, what the hell is that, right? They're, they, they're sadistic, pathological and malignant, most of them. They are pathological liars and cheaters. You can never believe anything because everything is a lie. Everything is fake. So all they can do is get somebody, sleep with them to go on vacations where they're going to be miserable. They get somebody to drive around in a nice car and be miserable. They might get a date to get a nice meal and be miserable. But the whole time, they're probably using each other. How empty is that? And tell me, were you not empty? And a hollow shell when you were with the narcissist, isolated, anxious, in fear of what the hell they were going to do or when they were going to leave. After a while, man, they're, they end up becoming completely worthless to you. So, you know, you got to switch up your energy, but that's how it is. They don't have the fuel to get a high value target. They got you by mistake. Well, it was destiny, but in a sense, it was a mistake because they can't get another one like that. Then they're obsessed with you. So then they end up uh devaluing and smearing your name but all you got to do to that is just sit back because anybody that believes the lie then you need to leave them alone too they're kind of outing themselves as being narcissists or highly narcissistic so you don't want to know them you want to cut off everybody or anybody that knows the narcissist because they're going to be loyal to the narcissist because they don't have good in them either the downgrade supply they're going to roll right through them a lot of them so you might as well just Put your seatbelt on him and get you some popcorn or something because it's uh it's never going to end with them they just run through them quicker and quicker because they get more and more evil and they're losing their looks especially if you're getting if they're getting into their late 30s and 40s you know it ain't going to get better in the looks department and that's usually all they have a lot of times we give them too much credit because we think that they have charisma and charm and they could control you like they did. You came in innocent and telling the truth. They came in knowing they were going to manipulate you. And they've been doing it their whole life. That's cheap. That's cheating. They're cheating in the game. They can at least come to you and tell you what they're going to do so that you can put your guard up and see how you compete with them. To come at you like that.
That's why they call them wolves in sheep's clothing. That's why I call them pieces of shit. Because that's what they are. But they truly choose to become that way. And that's pretty much what their harem ends up looking like. Them. Acting like them. They probably got bad breath. They be doing drugs and all kind of stuff. They live in a dungeon. So when they leave you, they gotta go to a dungeon and dust off some some dusty supply individual that's probably been isolating waiting for them. <laughs> you know? Or just got done cheating on them. It ain't nothing. Nothing special, man. But when they were with you, you actually made them feel like humanity. And that's what they that's why they're so frustrated all the time and miserable. Because they look at us and they get infatuated with us, and then because they can't become us, they gotta destroy us. And they try to destroy us so they can become us. But if you can't if they can't lift their vibration up, because their vibration has to do with their spirit, and their spirit has to do with their ethics. See, it all runs together. You are the closest thing they can get to God. You are the best thing that ever walked into their life. And you were their, probably their only hope of them changing. But instead, they tried to destroy it. They tried to put you down. They, they smashed your face in the ground and laughed. And thank God he picked you up out the mud and elevated you. Because still I rise, y'all. Still I rise. And if you walk around with a spirit like that, you're going to start manifesting good things. Excellent things. When, when you get on a higher vibration, now you'll have a plane to where you can have people coming at you that are like you. You see? Whatever plane or vibration level you're on is what you are going to attract. And that's why you don't want to be with the narcissist. Because they pull you down to their level by devaluing you, discarding you, taking you back, destroying you, manipulating you, cheating on you, doing sadistic acts, duping you. Pulling everything good out of your life. Leaving you with the empty bag. And then you'll wonder why you feel like you don't even know who you are anymore when you when they leave you for the last time. They're going to be stalking you. Listen, when you start to glow up, they're going to be stalking you. They're going to be trying to hoover you. When they when the, the narcissist with the new supply and you don't play into the triangulation, see, you understand the construct now. You know who they are. And you know how to operate around them. And you have a new, you're a new you. And when you're a new you, they, they don't even know what to do. You can even tell them that you, you woke up to narcissism. They, they still won't even pay attention to that. It's like it just goes in one ear out the other. But they don't understand how bad they live, on, they live on tracks. They almost don't even know that they're being manipulated by evil spirits. I mean, that's how bad it is. They're backwards from humanity and they'll never be happy. It doesn't matter what source of supply they're with. But first they devalue you behind closed doors with the new supply, but then when you don't play into the triangulation because you're not around, you are you got them blocked. You ain't even picking up the phone, reading the email. If you get it, it's in spam, and you're just deleting it. The only thing they can do is come at you, and all you do is you look at them funny. Or you smile because they look stupid. But they're, then when you won't play in anything, then they start defending you to the new supply. They don't know what to do anymore. They, they're obsessed with you. They get an obsession and the new supply gets obsessed with you and they'll be they'll be stalking you too. It's like ridiculous. Then you'll have uh you'll have an unwanted fan for the rest of your life. They might be poking out of bushes at your house when you come home. They're ridiculous. They are truly a loser. So leave them with the new supply because all they can do they got, the, they got the narcissist doctoring them up, actually giving them some positive reciprocity. Because they have to, because they got to try to make them look good. Because they're going to see you. And if they're with them, they ain't going to be looking too good, you know? Because generally speaking, they don't look so cute. Anyway. The new supply, if you don't feed into triangulation and you go no contact, the new supply will get destroyed real quick. Not that it's, it may not, <clears throat> it's not that you wish it upon the new supply because the new supply could be, could be a good person you were. Generally, they're not. Generally, they're as bad as the narcissist and they will get what's coming to them. And generally, whenever you've recovered, they can't wait to come back to you because they haven't got no love. And if you ever ask the narcissist, why... What do they like so much about you? They're going to say how you make them feel. Because you made them feel great. You made them feel special, loved, and taken care of. Protected and needed. And that's 
what they'll never get from somebody else, not to the level that you gave it to them, to where you put them so far in front of you, you almost got destroyed over it. It's not healthy, but that's what you did, and you, you did it because you cared, and you know that they were hurt. But you can't fix anybody. And when you're on a vibration level like that, it is always abusive. Everybody on that level is abusive. And you will see them fall. You will watch them fall. You will watch them get grimy. And you will watch them live a horrible life at some point. Because the truth always comes out. You don't have to do anything but sit back. Your vengeance is giving it to the Lord. Laying at the cross, man, because it's over. All you do is just chill. It'll come back to you because this stuff will start, the people will start ringing in your ear. So if you can give me a like, subscription, and thumbs up, till next time I love you all. Peace, we out.